But first, Hugh Grant has told ITV News he still feels bitter and is determined to exact justice on those in the newspaper industry he believes commissioned unlawful activity to invade his privacy. Appearing in a new ITV documentary, Tabloids on Trial, the actor speaks for the first time about his recent settlements with the Sun newspaper. Prince Harry, Charlotte Church, Paul Gascoigne, Gordon Brown, plus people who weren't famous but found themselves catapulted onto the front pages or feature in the programme, which airs on ITV1 and ITVX at 9 o'clock this Thursday evening. Our correspondent, Rebecca Barry, who's reported on the phone hacking scandal over the last decade, heard the impact on some, from some of its most high-profile victims. This isn't something that's only about phone hacking. There was microphones in window boxes outside the house. There were trackers, microphones dropped into my car. Uh, there were medical records of me and, and uh, the mothers of my children, for instance. All blagged and stolen out of the NHS. And uh, perhaps most spectacularly, the burglary of both my flat and my office. Speaking to me in an ITV documentary, this is Hugh Grant's first interview since his settlement with The Sun newspaper. He made these claims in his recent legal action, allegations the newspaper has always strongly denied. In the case of my flat burglary, yeah, it was quite spectacular in that the, the, the whole door had been taken off its hinges and nothing was stolen. They'd been there to get uh, information and a lot of information about the interior and the contents of my flat appeared in newspapers a couple of days later. How do you feel today here? He says he reluctantly settled out of court for an enormous sum of money because even if he'd won at trial, he could have faced a £10 million bill. The son settled without any admission of liability. If you're innocent, why do you shove so much money at someone not to go to court? Newsgroup newspapers told us in some disputed cases it's made commercial sense to settle before trial. The scars of unlawful tabloid tactics run deep. From the ages of like, you know, 15 to 21 essentially, I had an inescapable abuser, the press. From the age of 16, Charlotte Church was being hacked by the news of the world. It, there's just a level of paranoia and anxiety. We used to say, oh God, have they, tapped, have they tapped our phones? Are they, have they got microphones in our house? Let's go. So my mother, already an incredibly venerable woman, her mental health was really bad. And I'd found her after taking an overdose. She was in a really bad way. And that was straight in the press. Straight in the press, no idea again where it came from. I mean, it was horrific. And she's never been able to, to fully come back from the abuse that she suffered. In 2012, the publisher of the News of the World paid substantial damages and offered its sincere apologies. Them times were like the best times in my life until I started getting hacked in that. Even national heroes became victims. And I went paranoid. So I went out and bought six phones. So I just kept on changing numbers. You know, and you think, God, when's it going to stop? Yeah, and then I got just, I, I come a recluse. Didn't, didn't want to speak to nobody. Paul Gascoigne was unlawfully targeted by Sun tabloids as he was struggling with addiction and treated in rehab. I was just speaking to my mum and dad, and it, just them. The next day, it would come out with the papers. So I went mad, I said, what the f are you speaking to the papers for? I said, well, I haven't spoken to them. I said, you have. You're the only two I've spoken to. I love me mum and dad. So to think they were, thought they were hackers was good. In 2015, Mirror Group newspapers were ordered to pay damages and apologised. A claim against the News of the World was settled with a full apology in 2012. The Sun settled later 
without admitting liability. Other allegations reach the very heart of power. There seem to be no limits to what this group would do. Despite the publisher's strenuous denials, Gordon Brown has accused newsgroup newspapers of unlawful information gathering since he gave evidence under oath at the Leveson inquiry. My bank account was broken into, my building society account was broken into, my gas bill, my electricity bill, my telecommunications bill. I know that they tried to get information from the police computer about me. All these things happened to me during the period I was Chancellor and uh, Prime Minister. This respected statesman now joining others, calling for fresh criminal investigations. I don't, I, I don't hold massive grievances against the foot soldiers or these guys who did this stuff. Not against them, but I, I remain bitter and determined to exact justice on the executives who commissioned this stuff. Despite apologies and more than a billion pounds spent on legal fees and payouts by two of Britain's biggest newspaper groups, for many, the pain endures. Some really emotional interviews there, Rebecca. It still has such a huge impact on people. Yeah, I mean, some people say to me, phone hacking, wasn't that something that was exposed and settled decades ago? But what I've discovered when I've covered court cases, when I've interviewed people, and in this documentary, is that unlawful invasions into privacy can have really long-lasting impacts. And I think that those interviews give a really visceral insight into the psychological and the emotional impacts that they can have, even years on. Uh, the famous people that I've spoken to all tell me the same thing that they are speaking out on behalf of people who were not famous, uh, but were victims too. And there's one person in particular who feels so strongly about this and significantly has the financial firepower to see this through the courts. And that is, of course, Prince Harry. I interview him as part of this documentary. It's the first time that he's spoken since his win against Mirror Group newspapers. He reveals his reaction to that ruling and he gives an insight into the impact that years of unlawful activity had on him. We'll release some of that interview tomorrow. But this story is not just about princes and prime ministers. The documentary also features people who were suddenly caught up in tragedy, but then also targeted by some tabloids. OK, Rebecca, thanks very much.